It's Madden NFL 22, and we've got a showcase of shutdown defenses. It's the reigning NFC champs and the Vikings on Thursday night primetime. Nightfall in Minneapolis in December usually spells freezing temps, and that is precisely the case outside these walls. But we are a comfortable 72 degrees inside U.S. Bank Stadium. The scene a short time ago. This crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with Dan Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gardner. And CD, this is a passing league. I don't think you would argue that thought. But our ball game here features a couple of teams with strong offensive lines that really like to work the ground game. And you and I have both heard from different people in the league who say it has become a little bit of a lost art in the NFL, the ability to run the football. And we've heard from defensive coordinators who tell us that they call the pass first. That's not something you normally hear. But these two offenses, they're true to who they are. Both ranked in the top five in terms of rushing yardage. I think they're both going to use those massive offensive lines to try and wear down these defenses. Greg Zerline now. He'll handle the honors to get us started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. And we will not get a run back here, here to go. start. Here it's go. a touchback, here and it go. will come out to the 25. Under center for the Vikings, out comes the former Michigan State Spartan and longtime veteran Kirk Cousins. Not bad for a fourth-round draft pick. Well over 100 career starts now, and the chemistry with his top targets, really on point. They spend a lot of time in practice and after practice making sure the routes are run well, and he knows exactly where they're going to be on the field. And when they get open, he delivers. They go play action. Cousins under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Yeah, the safety Don't blitz turns tracks, out baby. to be a great Don't call defensively tracks. as they sack him for a loss of nine. We talked about prior to the game, and it played out right there on the first play, didn't it? This offensive line is going to have his hands full all day long. Well, you often speak of scripts to start a game. Does this mean that play number two, they're going to go off the script a little bit? Yeah, what's interesting is that most people, when they script now, they actually script their contingencies in. Okay, in case they can't run the play they want to, how it's long distance now, let's go to that play. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. You ready? Hey, check, check back, relax. From the gun, here's Cousins. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got him both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Terrell Basham in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Now they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And that nearly an interception here on this opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. Third and long for Cousins. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. The Vikings send out their punter. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one hears away. It'll go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return. Now we'll see what the right arm of Dak Prescott has in store as the Dallas Cowboys offense sets up shop. And if you go by the numbers, he's had a Pro Bowl-type season. And maybe that's even selling him a little bit short. He's the NFL leader in touchdown passes to this point in the year. And with the end of the season not too far away, he's got his guys playing at a very high level. So Prescott to the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their 38. And he 
He's not going anywhere to start tonight. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. Here's second and ten. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. On the left side, Gallup's got it. That catch good for five. It's third down. Looking to throw. Prescott. Open man is Kyle Pitts. His tight end. And he takes this one down we almost got all the way to the let's 30. Let's go, let's go. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field. And a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. On first down, it's Elliott. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The numbers for Zeke from last week. 16 carries, 124 yards. And now he's playing a Thursday night game short week. You know he spent a lot of time in the trainer's room in the cold tub trying to get his legs back for this game. Elliott going to get it again on second down. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. <laughs> Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Prescott escaping the pressure right. Oh, he's got his tight end pitch complete. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside go, the 10 Let's to the go. 7. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. And the ball smacked down on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. And he rifles one incomplete. And that makes the score 7-0. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's capped off for the Cowboys touchdown. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And listen, these Thursday night games, they're tough on the body. You just played on Sunday, 72 hours later. Hey, it's game day again, but I have to think a Thursday night game in September much more preferable than a Thursday nighter in December, no? Well, there's no doubt about it. You mentioned how tough it is on the body. How about the mind? You're already tired, fatigued, right? Trying to battle for playoff spots. And here you have the quick turnaround. Now, the flip side is, if you take care of business, win that Thursday nighter, you go into a mini open week. Gives you a few extra days to heal up the body and the mind before you play your next game. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And now a timeout called by the Cowboys defense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. Hey, check, check. Now a handoff looking right. And after the good gain last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Cousins gives way to Cook. They find some open field here. 
He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 47 yards rushing for him now, and he's only carried the ball four times. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Left side, Cook. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. Well, this defense for the Cowboys, they were very strong in the win last week over the Giants. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw on tape because they stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire game, ended up getting four sacks total, and made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. Also made it hard for him to escape the pocket and run. On third down, Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. And he is not going to get to the marker as they stop him short at the 14. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. And no signs of the field goal unit. They're going for it on fourth down. Running for it. Here's Cook. And he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. Dalvin Cook turned away on fourth down. And the Cowboys defense is going to get him the football back. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. As mentioned, this one of the hottest teams in the NFL, riding that winning streak into this one. But now playing here on Thursday night, do you think that this helps or hurts their momentum? Well, ordinarily, I'd say it hurts the momentum because now you've got that short week. But when a team's playing as well as they are, it actually allows them to down focus and only worry about themselves and less about their opponent. So when you're playing well, you just worry about the things you're doing well and let the opponent deal with it. A sizable gain there of nine yards, but it's still third and long. Prescott down. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Here's Brian Anger now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. There's the stiff arm, and he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back, and the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense back on the field, and maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with a quarterback on the ground so much. And he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. And this will be a Vikings first down as the tackle made at about the 43-yard line. Stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Getting the ball is Cook running left. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of person. And he will go down, a Cowboys sack. Demarcus Lawrence, that is one he will remember. It's sack number 85 of his great career, moving him past Hall of Famer Howie Long on the all-time list. The Vikings send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? Good work, boys. Let's go. Three yard line. Let's That's go. where they spot it. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. They'll start the drive with Elliott. 
And he's got Rome. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. All day, baby, all day. For a lot of people, MVP award means a quarterback award usually, but over 100 yards again last week. And they're going to have to look his way more than once when giving out this award this season, I think. Yeah, it's not just the consistency. It's been some plays that we've seen where we talk about him for weeks thereafter. That's what we're getting out of him over 100 yards last week. It's best to continue that in this game, too. Second down, it's Elliott. And this is going to be a Cowboys first down as the tackle made at about the 38. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. And just a yard to go here on second down. This offense, Charles, where we've talked about how well they played all season. Sitting now 13-0 and at the finish line for a perfect regular season. That's in sight. Some of the media this week are pointing back to the 07 Patriots. Of course, remember, they finished the regular season unbeaten, but they were tested multiple times in that final month plus. Yeah, it was something like four of the last six wins were one possession games, and they played like a team that was trying to protect something instead of chasing something. And that's what happens when you have an undefeated record. So it behooves you as a team. Get a couple blowouts in there so you get a chance to relax and breathe. But that's much easier said than done. They'll go with Pollard here on first down. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. They stay on the ground, but this time it's Elliott. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four. Here's Prescott. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first, thanks to a flashy little spin move. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think a guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him Come get on, that man. wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. So everyone thought they were doing something, and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, touchdown, Cowboys! Two first-half touchdown oh, yeah. passes now for, for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move? And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Vikings. Oh, wow. Justin Jefferson, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Vikings get the quick strike touchdown. Extra point up and through. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Now Pollard. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Let's go, baby. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. 
And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That was pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Samson Abuka in there to bury him for a loss of 11. They're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Tim Carey now for Elliott. And good yardage as he gets this one up to about the 23. Easy work. It's easy The Vikings going to signal again. for the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. It'll be a handoff to Pollard. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Anger is on to punt, and he gets this one away. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And with just under a minute to go, they might try to think about mounting a drive here if they can and get in the end zone to potentially tie this game up. They're going for Jefferson downfield. And that will be incomplete. Later. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. To throw, Cousins. Over the middle, complete. It's Smith. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. First down now, but the clock continues to move. And incomplete on the deep ball. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. He goes right back to Jefferson, and this one complete. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A first down throw for Cousins. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. To throw is Cousins. He's going to get this one down to Cook. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Cowboys out on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Man, where has the season gone? We're into week 15 now. So let's give everybody a look at what's coming up here on what should be a very interesting weekend of football. As far as the early games go in that 1 o'clock window, we'll be focused on that game in Nashville, a big one for the Titans, as they'll host the Washington football team. In the late afternoon games, one of the best of the bunch will be at Soldier Field in Chicago, where it'll be the Bears taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. And lastly, on Monday Night Football, this will be one to tune in for, as they've got a good one lined up between the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. With that, let's take a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Cowboys. And they've had some success on the ground. And with the lead going into the second half, they'll no doubt be looking to keep it going. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. Final adjustments being made in the locker rooms. We're just about ready for the second half from Minneapolis. And for the call, let's rejoin Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Now Pollard. 
And able to get this out to the 25. Let's go, boys. Let's go. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking... And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Set. Samson Abukum, his second sack of the night. Second and 11. Again to Elliott. Fights him off. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 70 yards rushing for him in this one, and he is drawing ever closer to a 2,000-yard season. On first and 10, Prescott. And this one's incomplete. Michael Gallup, that's who he was looking for on second down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. For whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? But you're good at it. Um, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Well, that's always a good place to throw it, just because he's one of the biggest targets, not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Flushed out right. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short game. Flush to his right. Oh, Prescott stripped, and the Vikings pick up the football. And a great return here gets us with all the way down to the 26 yard line. Yeah. So turnovers, Charles, you figure will be key in the second half, and that's a big giveaway there. Yeah, and as you and I both know, coaches are always preaching ball security, and none more often than right here in the second half of a tight football game. Now you've got to believe what the coaches are saying and take care of that football. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Cousins. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Demarcus Lawrence able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game. And now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. Let's go! Dallas offense set for this next drive. Yeah, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead, you've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. To throw once more on second and ten. Prescott, he'll get this out wide here to Elliott. And he'll be just shy of the 20 at the 19 as he goes out of bounds. They get six. That'll leave him with third and four. Now Prescott. And that will be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. So a change of possession here on the play. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. 
didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Cousins to throw it. And that's taken in. It's B.C. Johnson. You got it! A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Here we go. Here we go. I think it's a lot of shoulders just dropped there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. Got a man that's caught inside the 10. Touchdown, Vikings. Justin Jefferson with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Point after up and go. And that will tie our game here in the third. So that drive, four plays. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. They had that 14-0 lead, but that has evaporated as they go to work here first and 10. They start on the ground with Elliott. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. On second down, Elliott once more. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. 78 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it's a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And this is going to be a Cowboys first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a hunting down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward to get the first down. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. Tackle made by Eric Kendricks. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. Prescott. Elliott complete and able to break one tackle but then quickly brought down but a nice little gain they get seven out of that so they're left with a third and three there's Prescott they'll set up the screen to Elliott and he's able to get it to the 31 and that's enough for the first let's go as an unbiased observer I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. A first down throw for Prescott. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. Another carry tonight for the workhorse Elliott. And down inside. 
inside the 15, shy of the 10. Run, 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 and run it. We play to win. One call Let remains go. here in this Thursday night matchup. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Both teams working on short rest, but this has been one of the better Thursday night games we've seen as they come up here on first and ten. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Elliott. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott with his 16th touchdown of the year. And the Cowboys have taken the lead. Zerline good with a PAT. And the lead is now 21-14. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown run by Ezekiel Elliott. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. And this will be a touchback, on, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Vikings offense making their way back out. Now let's give you a look at the playoff picture coming into the weekend in the NFC. And as we take a look at the playoff picture, certainly still a lot of jostling to go in these final few weeks. For the moment, they would be a wild card team. Far from locked up, but that's, that's why this is exciting. These last few weeks, a lot to play for. So much to play for. And remember, seven teams in each conference go to the playoffs instead of six. And not to mention, remember when the league made that move a few seasons ago to put divisional games at the end of the year? So you get to week 16 and 17, you're playing for playoff spots, and you're playing divisional games. Couldn't be more exciting than that. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Cook with a run on first down, but he'll only manage they a couple there it, before son. he's taken they down. Don't want it. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Play action now. Cousins. Pass incomplete. No grounding call there. He had a receiver near the right sideline. It was pretty clear there. He just needed to get rid of that one. And he did have a receiver in the area, but initially my view was obstructed, and I thought that was going to be grounding, but clearly the correct call made, and that is no call. Is that why you threw your post sheet down? Is that why you did it? Is that the flag? You can't be giving me up. I got a lot of issues up here in the booth. The Vikings send out their punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is... Do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. And now a pass dumped off to his running back. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. So that'll go as a four-yard loss on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. Throw it. Prescott. Got this complete to the tight end pits. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now. He's been terrific so far. To the punt on that play. We've Good got a man one, down on the go. field. Let's While go. the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Uh -huh. 
Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 20. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. From the 25 on second down, Cousins. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the Saints. The Chiefs franchise. And now it looks like we've got a Cowboy shaken up down there on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Cousins. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Second down and eight. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 45-yard line. We want it. Come to my work. Throwing, Cousins. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. On play action, Cousins under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Smith. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. The Vikings send out their punter as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted spotted at the 14-yard line. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. He'll hand it off to Elliott to begin the drive. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back, tell him to take care of the ball, and try to move forward. 126 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's going on. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll be taken down after a gain of about eight as no that problem. will lead you us to the... So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. They go back to Pollard on second down. And not much doing. He'll get this only up to about the 36. Boom! 
So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Trying to run for it with Pollard. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Now a give here to Pollard. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Now Pollard. And he is met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there. So here we go, Charles, third down. Any chance you're throwing? I don't think so. I think you got to keep the clock rolling here. So indeed, they did keep it on the ground, but now it's fourth down, so this one's maybe not quite over. The clock is still their ally, though, so just no panic here. Let it run all the way down. Eluding the pressure, and he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Daniil Hunter, he's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on the punt for Dallas. and close. The question, was it a touchback? On, no. Let's go. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. You need to get the ball away here in the fourth quarter while you just hold a slim lead. But that punt, absolutely ideal. They pin them inside the five-yard line. They give their defense a really nice opportunity. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Cousins to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. These are the spots this stage of the game where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with me. And he's going to go down in the end zone. Cousins taken down for the safety. What a gut punch. That should be the nail in the coffin with those two points making this a two-score game now with time, Charles, clearly not on their side. Yeah, they have to give the football away as well. Had a chance. Yeah, it was a small chance to get down the field, but guess what? This one's now just about over. Freaking out of So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Dalton down to a knee, and that'll be all she wrote. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are that? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. They'll go ahead and take the knee here, and the unbeaten season will continue. So this one will end in a victory for the Dallas Cowboys, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. 
So for the Cowboys, they move ever closer to the perfect regular season as they run things to 14-0. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week where they take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, they fall to 8-6 with the loss. And they'll try and turn things around next week as they have a date at Soldier Field with the Chicago Bears.